What's going on everyone? Looking at the market today was not a pretty sight. Looking at the charts right now, we had a lot of selling pressure in the market. And I'll tell you right now, bears are getting more and more in control of this market and bulls are starting to hurt a little bit. In today's video, we're going to go over all the important things you need to know going into the market for tomorrow. Some of the best setups to watch out for. And we have one piece of news that I'll tell you, I did do a double take take on because I just couldn't believe it. But with that being said, let's jump right into today's episode. Tom, what is going on in this market? And like, seriously, it's just like we saw a bunch of selling pressure today. What is happening? Exactly. And this morning, whenever I woke up, I was actually very surprised. Like I jumped out of bed. I was like, holy crap, the stock market's exploding. I got all excited. And then whenever the market opened, we really uh, saw things change back to the downside. And the SPY actually hit off a pretty big level up here, right around 459.50, almost hitting 460. And I'll say, Mike, we've been watching a channel here on the SPY for quite a while here. And it's actually starting to bounce off this upper trend line again to the downside. I don't know what's going on with this trend line, but every time that we get to there recently, we've been falling right back off, and now we're actually right to the bottom trend line as well. So I'm curious for tomorrow if we're going to continue to fall down and out of this channel, or if we're going to actually stay in it and maybe ride it up into the end, because you know you can see it kind of converging up here. So I'm really curious to see where we're going to go, and I think that there's some good supports to watch like on the SPY here, like right around 451 and 450. I actually created an alert today right around 450 40 just saying like spy around support so i'm ready if it breaks below but man mike we're not looking good and i know like meta's earnings were looking great last night and then today uh they definitely turned back around now they're still green but it's just terrible to see them falling and it drug all these other tech stocks down like google ended up pulling back apple microsoft it was a very bloody day no doubt about that. And I'll tell you, like, Microsoft and Tesla especially took some pretty big hits today. And they were, like, part of <laughs> the main reason that the market was falling so much. Both of these stocks already reported earnings. And both of them also had... I wouldn't say horrible reactions to their earnings reports, but they definitely were not good. So they're like having like an earnings continuation down, which, you know, drags the whole market down with them. And as a lot of people will look at the market today, they'll ask themselves, what made stocks fall? And while there wasn't any completely game-changing news, it's just like, that's what happens sometimes. You know, sometimes the market pulls back and Tom, if we're being honest, it's not like the S&P 500 is oversold right now by any means. Like, the market has been running for uh, quite a bit now, and, you know, a pullback is only normal. Exactly. And, you know, whenever we go out to like an hourly chart, I just cannot believe how much we've been running and how much we're actually getting above some of these key levels, like $400. I thought a recovery back to that was big this year. Now we're all the way up to 460. You can see how it's just been like straight up movement lately. And, you know, there's been so much weighing on the economy this week with all the big events and everything like that going on. We had the FOMC come in. We have, we obviously we've had, we had GDP data this morning, which actually seemed good. That's that's part of what pushed the market up. But then we started just falling back off at open as those bears came in. And Mike, we keep talking about you know, bears coming into the market and, you know, how hedge funds are really looking for a lot of big pullbacks. At least a lot of them are. And it's, uh, it's starting to kind of play out that way. And it seemed like Powell helped us and we were going to start to move up, but I don't know. It's been very shaky so far. And I think next week we'll start to maybe see more pullbacks coming in. I think there's a good chance that we'll see stocks pull back even more than they are right now. And that's a good thing because, you know, while it's easy to make money when stocks are going up, um, it's pretty exciting to make money when stocks are going down because the moves are a lot more violent. I'm sure a lot of you have already heard that, you know, the stock market takes the stairs up and then the elevator down and some there's a lot of ways to capitalize off of a falling market, but some of the easiest ways are trading like some of these inverse ETFs like SQQQ. This thing rises a lot when the market falls. You know, for example, SQQQ popped up by only 1% today, which isn't too much, but that's also from a close to close basis. So like, for example, intraday, QQQ had a pretty decent run up. Um, and another like ETF that does pretty good when the market's falling is like SPXS. 
uh, VXX, and like even UVXY. So just make sure to keep a very close eye on these ETFs going forward because when the market sells off, um, they're pretty good to trade in the short term. Yeah, they are. And hey, if you guys profited off of SQQQ today, let me know in the comments down below. I've actually been looking at a lot of options on SQQQ lately, and they're actually getting to a pretty big resistance. I know it's just an ETF, but if they start breaking this recent high, I mean, who knows? They could start to probably run up to 19 if not even $20 over the next few days if that selling comes in. And Mike, you know, we keep talking about big earnings and big events, you know, in the stock market here. Something big for tomorrow. We do have the oil stocks report. Reporting. And today we had Royal Caribbean, McDonald's, Southwest Airlines, MasterCard. We had quite a bit come in. So watch those oil stocks tomorrow. It should be pretty big for the market. Even Colgate reports down there, which is like a, like a good dividend stock for anybody wondering. And then another thing too, like we've been saying is, you know, don't forget about the stocks that even reported earnings a couple days ago. So like Meta, Microsoft, and Google, you know, you can ride those for uh, earnings continuation plays. So don't forget about those. A lot of times they have good moves even after earnings. And Tom, while the earnings we've been seeing lately um, haven't necessarily had good like price reactions with the stock it's not like earnings have been bad at all so looking at we could say some earnings data for eps growth year over year we can see that earnings are actually or earnings per share is actually positive still which is good to see and it came in at around seven uh, percent year over year which you know definitely not bad uh for this earnings season yeah, it's really not. Now, what I'll say is like 7%, it's good. Now, there's times in the past, like 2016, 17, 18, where we were like holding above that in a pretty steady way. So I do think it's good to see us getting back into the positive. I still think that there's more room to go up, obviously. Um, but obviously, we're, it looks like we're coming off a pretty crazy time, Mike. I mean, look at that COVID number there with those beats on EPS. 287 percent like no wonder we're having some issues right now so i think we're still kind of feeling the effects of that covid situation obviously and the market's still trying to get through some of those issues but it's still uh it's still crazy to see that we're up in the positive even though and you know in my opinion the earnings season's been kind of lackluster mike so it's really just how the market interprets it and we always say that that's why earnings are so much of a gamble because it doesn't matter. You could have the best earnings in the world, but if the market interprets it in a bad way, boy, your, your stock's going to fall. That's what it's been this season. You know, it's like decent slash good earnings equals falling stock prices. So that's okay. You know, sometimes the market does some whack stuff, but just keep that in mind when we have, you know, these other stocks that will report next week and even two weeks from now, because that has been the trend lately. Bears have definitely been in control. But Tom, while we don't have any like major big tech stocks reporting earnings tomorrow, what events do we have on the schedule? Yeah, it's actually looking pretty good for uh, tomorrow. So to end the week, we have the PCE data coming out. This morning, we had that GDP growth rate, which really uh, brought the market up in pre-market. So I'm curious to see how the personal spending numbers are. It looks like they're actually expecting them to come in a little bit higher than the previous numbers. So that's a good thing to see. I hope that it helps out the market. But Mike, it's just, it's all what ifs, right? Uh, this is going to show like where people are spending their money, uh, how much is going into certain things, etc. So it's going to be a pretty good insight, I think, into the economy. Now, I don't think a lot of people really look at PCE and understand it too much, but it, you know, it can show like, for example, that people are buying more food at the grocery store or spending more on it, for example, stuff like that. All righty. Uh, another thing worth noting, Tom, that was just absolutely mind-blowing today was some crazy news with this multi-millionaire crypto influencer whose body was found dismembered in a suitcase in Argentina. So this, I, I had to do a double take on this news. Like I, I seriously couldn't believe it. So long story short, this multi-million dollar crypto guy um you know he had like a luxury car rental uh place in miami and uh he was like pretty famous on instagram uh his body's been found by kids in argentina dismembered in a suitcase so this is pretty crazy uh from the looks of it it looks like um he was uh borrowing money from some bad people and you know this is what happened so this is crazy news, and I figured it's somewhat relevant to the market. 
It, it is kind of, you know, I, I know this isn't going to be anything where, you know, stocks are going to be moving off of anything like this, but it's definitely interesting. And it's just a scary world out there, you know, to have things like this happen. But then again, uh, you know, he was involved with a violent gang and they <laughs> demanded they pay him a $40,000 loan. He even said, if something happens to me, everyone is already warned. So, I don't know. He seems like he knew something was going to happen, but I don't know. Definitely scary, Mike. And uh, I don't know about you, Mike, but I'm going to go into hiding now. <laughs> Gosh. Lesson learned. If uh, the stock market goes against you, uh, don't take loans from shady people. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, especially gangs. <laughs> yeah, gosh. So, yeah, that's crazy there. But uh, back to uh, what we have going on in the market right now. Um, essentially, I saw some pretty interesting data on this chart right here around bear markets. So this chart's going to be a little bit confusing, but I'm going to break it down in a nice and easy way. Long story short, we have, you know, we'll call it uh, two lines here. We have the black line and we have the pink line. The black line represents the current market. And what we could see, like the cross here is like right in the middle. That shows the market peak. Exactly right there. That shows the market peak. The pink line shows what happens on average when the market pinks, both or on average before the market peaks, right? Uh, you can see what happens before and after the peak. And, you know, looking at the right side of the chart, we can see on average or technically the median with data going back to 1929, um, the market is normally a lot lower than what we're seeing right now. And it just goes to show you again how much this market is overbought, right? Right? So like basically the main thing to take away from this news is you could say looking back over the past almost a hundred years worth of data throughout all of these bear markets, we really don't see recoveries like we're seeing now. So take from that what you want, but it is worth noting because this uh, recovery has been pretty historic. Exactly. And you would think that we would get at least a little bit closer to the average as time goes on, right? Like whether that's the average coming up a little bit more or whether that's us dipping down or, or maybe both converging a little bit. But I think that we'll definitely be coming back a little bit more if it's not this year, maybe early next year. Um, I know the market's been recovering up pretty well during this, you know, as a lot of people have been saying, bad economy, right? Like we're going into, a lot of people say that we've been in recessions. A lot of people are calling for recessions. So I, I don't know. I, I don't even think it's going to happen at this point, Mike, with the way the market's looking. I, fe I feel like right now the market just continues to, to just prove everybody wrong right now. It's just like, even though they're raising rates, it's like the market still goes up. It's like, what the hell's going on right now? Yeah, we shall see. But either way, I, I really would not be surprised if we saw a pullback for sure. Yeah, I wouldn't either. And, you know, you go look at big stocks out there like NVIDIA, Meta, stocks like that. We look at them all the time. We go to a daily chart and we're just like, wow, like at some point these pullbacks are going to start happening. And when they do, the floodgates are going to open. Like you said, Mike, it's the staircase up and the elevator down. And there's some big gaps to fill on some of these charts. Like NVIDIA's gap here between like 300 and 365 is just insane. Yeah, and I'm not necessarily in the camp of like, oh, yeah, the market's going to see a, you know, 1929 style crash, right? I'm just in the camp where it's like, look at some of these stocks are up way too much, right? And it's kind of hard to deny that. And I really wouldn't be surprised like with some of these stocks, if we did see like a decent pullback, of course, that depends on what stock we're looking at. You know, if we're looking at a stock like NVIDIA, the pullback will be much different than if we're looking at a stock like Coca-Cola, of course. But, you know, just be wary, guys. That's my main point. Um, and Tom, I, it's now time for uh, that part of the video where it's uh, time for some setups for tomorrow. So let's crack right into them. One stock I'm watching extra closely tomorrow is the powerhouse Apple. So Apple has been relatively weak lately. It has not necessarily been like falling too much. It's just been a little bit weaker than usual. And it has a pretty big level right around $192.50. If it breaks below that, I would love to uh, trade this one to the downside. Yeah, that's a pretty big support there in the short term. And we bounce right off of there again today. And what's interesting is it has like a lower high going on too. So I like this play for tomorrow. I think it'll be a good one. Watch for Apple puts. And I'll, I'll say Apple was interesting today. It like ran up at open and 
that uh, that move down was definitely significant. So I like it to the downside, Mike. And talking about downside plays, I know we just talked about NVIDIA a little bit a minute ago, but I'm watching them to the downside, of course, again, as well. They also have like a little bit of a lower high going on here and even up here, a little bit of like a double top slash lower high. And they've also been following this trend line very well lately. So I'm really going to look for another move down below like 455 tomorrow. That's going to be a big support. And I'm looking at 455 for a specific reason if we go out to the book map here you can see that 455 is actually a big level here uh there's there was a little bit of sellers coming in at the end of day now it's not like there was a ton stacked up there all day but that is a fairly decent support i noticed on the chart too so if we get below there i'll actually be looking for a bigger drop to the downside and what i like is that there's not a ton of buyers in between these areas so like if we end up you know moving down below 455 i think targeting like 445 is going to be a good area for tomorrow and if we go back to the chart 445 is going to be like just reaching that other recent support down there at the bottom so that's a good target i like that play to the downside and hey it's always good to have x-ray vision on your side knowing where those buyers are lined up at you know it. And another thing, too, is if you want a discount for this X-Ray Vision, check out that first link in the description in the comments down below. Shout out, Bookmap. You guys are awesome. But, Tom, it's now time for the next play, uh, which is Tilray for me. And it's actually to the upside, which I also talked about this stock in yesterday's video. And it worked out great today. Uh, Tilray is a crazy stock. It is not for the faint of heart. This stock is very crazy, very volatile. But if, if it has good uh, volume, volume and momentum that breaks above two dollars and thirty cents i would love to uh, continue to play this one to the upside the most important thing for this stock and i if i could say this like 20 times in a row i would is it needs to have big volume if this thing is just like slowly inching up with like no momentum and just like you know average volume it's not worth playing but if it's moving with some good volume good momentum uh that's where the opportunity is yeah, exactly. It does need to have good volume coming in. And today we actually got that. Had a lot of great movement out of Tilray. It was actually one of the uh, awesome plays by the sniper bot or, or hybrid bot today actually as well. So good stuff with the bots. And I'll definitely keep Tilray on the radar, Mike. It's getting hot right now for those MJ stocks. I'm glad to see Tilray kind of doing this for us. Uh, but with my second play, I'm going with Visa. And this one is going to be to the downside. I don't know what's going on with these credit card companies, but this is going to be an earnings continuation play they've been having a lot of bearish movement since those earnings came out and if we're able to get under 233 for tomorrow i'm going to use that as a nice support and if we get under there i'll target 230 to the downside i think that could be a pretty safe move so watch out for this one maybe set an alert i'll definitely be making one here right around uh 232.99 all righty. Well, it's now time for those momentum plays. And with the first one, we have the beast QQQ to the downside. What? QQQ to the downside, Mike? Are you on drugs or something? What's going on? Some people, <laughs> Tom, some people in the comments are going to want to kill me for this, but go ahead. <laughs> I like it, actually. I think it's uh, very enticing, actually. Go ahead and make it drop under 375. You guys can see how that's a big level recently. If we get under there, I mean, definitely look at puts. Yep, stocks can't just go up forever. You know, I know some people were looking at the market today and they just couldn't believe it. They're like, how did stocks fall? But, you know, that's just how it works sometimes. You can't can't be up every single day. And then uh, with that being said, with the next one, we have Netflix also to the downside. Yeah, stock in the NASDAQ. So go ahead and make them break under 4.0 or well, I should just say 4.10. I don't know how I could say 4.010, but 4.10 to the downside. That's going to be a big level for tomorrow. Nice even area as well. And I love how they broke that 4.15 support today. That was good to see. All right, and then with the last one, we have Tesla for both directions. Yeah, we had to do both directions, right? So they are nearing support. Uh, if they end up breaking under 254, just under 255, then look at some puts for tomorrow. But if they end up running back above 260, then go ahead and look at some calls. 260 should be a pretty good resistance. I'll be honest, though, Mike, I'm kind of in the camp, <laughs> you know, for, for puts, of course, as we've been talking about. All righty, so we have that upside level for Tesla. If it breaks above that, we're watching it for calls. We have the downside level as well. If it breaks below that, we're watching it for puts. 
Of course, don't forget about the Netflix and QQQ plays as well, both of those for potential puts if they break below the levels Tom listed. But it is now time for the big money $775,000 trade of the day, and we are looking at LEN, the Lenner Corporation. This is a home building company. I'm sure a lot of you guys have at least heard of them before. And between rising interest rates, which makes mortgages more expensive, and decreasing home prices, that is not good for this company considering they build houses. Um, on top of that, the stock is very overbought as well, which is not a, a, not a bullish sign. It's definitely a bearish sign. So I definitely like this play. It is very tempting. For those of you who don't know how options work, this is essentially a bet that this stock will fall. Uh, right now, the stock's right around, we'll call it like 126. The put options are at the 125 strike. They expire on January 19th of 2024. I think the risk-reward situation is great with this one, Tom. And I also love to, you know, see how rates are rising and, you know, home prices are falling to, like, back this play up. Exactly. That's going to be the biggest thing here. And we actually have a really good chart showing the housing prices moving to the upside lately. Like I cannot believe how much the median housing price in the United States has been rising since COVID. Like you can see the median housing price like before 2020 was right, right around like 327, let's just say $330,000 at the peak here recently it was 479,000. And then recently 416,000 as of Q2 of this year. So it's insane to see that, Mike. Just housing prices going up like that with rates. Uh, that's definitely going to be causing some problems for home builders, people uh, investing in housing, stuff like that. It's going to be a little bit harsh. But hey, it, it was such a good market there for like a year or two that I guess, you know, the feds are trying to do that. But it's definitely an interesting play to follow. I like it a lot, Mike. You can see there's actually been two big money plays on Len recently. One at the 115 strike for January 2024 and one at the 125 strike. I like both of them. And this one's a little closer to the money, which makes me think that they're really not shorting that one. So I like the play. And even the setup on the chart looks great. Like if this pullback here keeps happening and we break below like 125, now this could this sell off could get brutal. Yeah, and let's jump back to the home price chart for a second. Uh, what's worth noting is that home prices themselves have been falling a lot. Like, yeah, when you look at like a long-term chart, home prices rise a quite a bit over time, but over the past couple of quarters, home prices have been falling more than you think, and I know that each area is different. You know, some markets are holding up a lot better than others, but, you know, just like when you look at the median home price in Q4 of 2022 at 479000 the most recent data point came in at 416000 Like, that's a pretty big difference, and as rates and mortgage rates keep rising, you know, I can't help to think what the next data point will come in in it. Like, will it be at 400,000 will it be less. Well, you know, it's just like the lower that goes, the worse it is for these home builders. Yeah, exactly. And I, I'm really uh, going to be thinking that it might come down to like 400,000 or something. Like you would think that these prices are going to start going down. And, you know, right now we just went through the summer months, right? Like we just went through some of the best time for buying houses. Now we're going to get into the winter months where it usually slows down a little bit more. So I'm curious to see if that ends up playing a factor too. But definitely going to have a problem for home builders. And Len should be a big stock on watch with some of these, you know, big money plays coming in. And Mike, some of these big money plays have been doing doing great this year so definitely keep len on the radar with how overextended it is i think that there's a great opportunity here if you follow this and keep in mind though this has time to it it's not like this is going to happen tomorrow right they're probably looking at this to drop over the next couple months or so exactly that's the thing like if you're expecting this stock to be down 40 percent tomorrow uh there's a lot of things that I want to say, but it just don't <laughs> expect that, you know, like this option has some time to it. So keep that in mind. But, uh, you know, I think the setup is pretty awesome and I love following big money. Um, that's just another reason you guys should subscribe. If you haven't already, we put a ton of hours, a ton of time in these videos to make them easy to watch and give you a great recap of the market and some things to look forward to. And we also cover, you know, big money hedge fund trades just like this one. So definitely. Definitely subscribe. We cover one of these trades in every single video. And when you subscribe, you'll see our videos recommended to you more often. But Tom, going into the market tomorrow, I think the most important thing that everyone has to be aware of is you better be able to adapt. 
If you treat the market from right now until the end of this year the same way that you treated it, you know, from the beginning of this this year to right now, I think you're in for some trouble, to be honest with you. Like, you have to be able to adapt. The markets are always changing, and those who don't adapt will struggle. I'll say that. You know, you have to be able to adapt. The market changes all the time. So keep that in mind. Tom, do you have any closing thoughts? Yeah, I mean, that's a big thing. There's always been that saying out there, adapt or die. And, you know, that's what do you have to do? You have to overcome your emotions and you have to be able to, you know, uh, adapt whenever it's accounted for. And I think that right now we're starting to see this start to happen where there's a lot of things changing. And as far as sentiment goes, uh, if we start to see some of these bigger moves down, then it's going to start to get bloody out there, especially, I think, whenever... Like right now, Mike, it's crazy. Like retail traders, they love the market. They just keep pushing it higher and higher and higher. I feel like once uh, once the floodgates open, like I keep saying, it's going to get a lot worse. Watch some of these supports for tomorrow. There's a lot of opportunities. Even if you're a bull, just watch these supports. Like if QQQ falls under 375, if you're a bull, then fine. Go play SQQQ calls. You could always be bullish on that. <laughs> True. Yeah, it's, it's got definitely a good point there. Um, last but not least, I want to give a giant shout out to today's member of the day janina in the stocked up uh you could say youtube comments we really appreciate how positive and supportive you are thank you so much for everything besides that guys we have one more day to the week let's do everything we can to make it a green one thank you guys so much for watching and let's end the week on a great note